Okay, good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is for you. Um, today's objective, we're finding the measure of inscribed angles and using them to solve some tricky problems. Uh, what is an inscribed angle? Well, it's an angle whose vertex lies on the circle. Now, we've talked about central angles before. That's where the vertex lies in the center of the circle. AOB is a central angle. And if that's 60 degrees, then you know the arc AB is also 60 degrees. Um, but an inscribed angle is when the vertex lies on the circle somewhere. Angle uh, Vertex X could lie anywhere on the circle. And then you would get this AXB, uh, which is called an inscribed angle. So now the language is a little tricky here. We say angle X intercepts arc AB, where the proper way to reverse it is arc AB subtends angle X. I personally can never remember that, so I always say that arc AB is intercepted by angle X. That's the language I use. I think it's easier to understand. Um, the inscribed angle theorem says that the measure of this angle, AXB, is going to be half what the measure of the arc is, the intercepted arc. So in this case, the intercepted arc was 60 degrees, so angle AXB is going to be 30 degrees. Okay, so let's follow this link into Sketchpad, and I'll show you a little bit more what I'm talking about here. Um, here I have set up a circle, and you see a central angle A. That's 80.12 degrees, and the arc is also measuring that same angle, which you'd expect. Now over here, this inscribed angle, CDB, is half of that measure. And no matter how I move, the vertex of that angle on the circle, it's always going to be half as much. Now if I change the measure of this arc and make it smaller, then the uh, the intercept or the um, inscribed angle is still half as much. Okay? It's half as much as the arc is. And that's always going to be the case. Okay, so you might want to pause the video here and see if you can find the measure of angle B C D. We know that BAD, angle BAD, which is an uh, inscribed angle, is 50 degrees. So that would mean that the arc uh, BD would have to be 100 because uh, the intercepted angle is always half the arc. So now what would the measure of angle BCD be, this angle right in here? What would the measure of that be? Well, it intercepts the same arc, 100 degrees. So um, you could say that uh, the arc subtends angle C, or I prefer angle C intercepts that that arc of 100 degrees, so then that angle too would have to be 50 degrees. So there's a corollary that go, goes along with this. If inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc or intercept the same chord, then they'll be congruent to each other. So once again, why don't you pause the video here and see if you can figure out these arcs and angles. So the measure of arc YZ, um, that is intercepted by angle X, which is 60 degrees. So we could say then that the arc has to be double that, 120 degrees. Now, the measure of angle W is right here. It intercepts that same arc, YZ, so it's got to be half of 120. It's going to be 60. Let's see. Y intercepts this arc, XW, so it would be half of 80, which is 40. XVY. How are we going to figure that out? Well, we know this is 40 now, so you could use a 180 degree rule for this little triangle to find XVY. So that's 100, so XVY has got to be 80. And then YVZ, YVZ would be supplementary to that 80, because it's right here, YVZ, so it would be 100 degrees. Okay, you may remember in an earlier lesson when we were talking about the circumcenter of a triangle, I showed you how the circumcenter of this triangle, where the, the perpendicular bisectors meet, is that that circumcenter is always on the hypotenuse of the right triangle. No matter how I change the size of the circle, you know, from any point, if I make Q a little closer to P or farther away from P, change the side, the circumcenter never leaves. Um, the hypotenuse, and it's always the center of the circle. Um, 
So this angle is guaranteed then to be a right angle. And we're going to be talking about why that always is the case. So now back to the inscribed right triangle theorem. It says an inscribed angle intercepts a semicircle if and only if the angle is a right angle. So if an inscribed angle intercepts a semicircle, then the angle is a right angle. Basically, that intercepted angle up here is intercepting this semicircle, which is 180 degrees, so that guarantees it's going to be a right angle. Um, said differently, if an inscribed angle is a right angle, then it intercepts a semicircle. So if you know it's a right angle, then you know it's intercepting this semicircle. So if you follow this link in Sketchpad, you can see exactly what I'm saying here. So you see that angle C is a right angle, and no matter how it moves along the circle, it's always going to be a right angle because it's always intercepting this arc AB. Okay, so here's an involved little problem. Why don't you pause the video here and see if you can find the measure of arc BC. So we see that angle B, um, it uh, intercepts this diameter and it intercepts this, this semicircle, semicircle ADC. Now since ADC is 180 degrees, then that means that angle B is going to be 90. Um, so A and C then are going to be complementary because you got a little right triangle in there, triangle ABC. So A and C have to add up to 90. Now we can figure out what X is. X is 25. So now to find arc BC, it would be helpful to know what angle A is. So I'm going to substitute 25 in there to figure out what angle A is. turns out to be 55 degrees. So the arc then is going to be double that, 110 degrees. Okay, so here's another one, similar but different. See if you can find the measure of arc ML. So we'll start by seeing that uh, M and N, angle M and angle N, they both intersect the same arc, LK. So that means they must be equal to each other. M and N, have, since they intercept the same arc, they have to be equal to each other. So that allows us to find what angle X is, or excuse me, what X is. Then uh, from there we can figure out what angle M is. So that's going to be 70 degrees. And obviously N would also be 70. Which makes this arc up here what? 140, right? So that arc up there is 140. Now, how could I find arc LM? Well, I see that MK is a diameter. So if MK is a diameter, that means... MLK, arc MLK, has to be a semicircle adding up to 180 degrees. So then I can just simply uh, subtract 140 from 180 to figure out ML is 40 degrees. So the last theorem for today is uh, this one involving a quadrilateral. Uh, you remember that the angles in a quadrilateral, uh, in a convex quadrilateral like this, always add up to 360 degrees because there's it's made up of two triangles in there, basically. Uh, what you may not know is that if it's inscribed in a circle, then the opposite angles are going to be supplementary to each other. They're always going to add up to 180. So A and C will be adding up to 180, and B and D will also be adding up to 180. Just to show you in Sketchpad what this looks like, it's kind of uh, interesting. As I change the position of A, the measure of angle A doesn't change. Only angles B and D change, but they're always adding up to 180. And the same if I change angle B. Angle B doesn't change because it's still intercepting the same arc no matter where I put it over here. But uh, angles A and C are changing, but they're always adding up to 180. And finally, the last problem for the day is kind of an easy one. Uh, obviously, K and M are opposite each other, so they have to be supplementary. Uh, that allows you to figure out what X is. Once you know what X is, you can figure out what K and M are. K is going to be 80, so M would have to be the supplement of that. That works out to be 100. And then the same going in the reverse direction. L and N have to be supplementary because it's an ins inscribed quadrilateral. And you can then figure out what uh, L and N are. And here is your mistake of the day. Alright, have a good day and I'll see you next time.